Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run-down no-horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves and the bow And the five-string melodies grooving With the farmland rows where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music yeah. This is Patrick McWilliams. I was on episode 49 talking about uh, my encounters with Sasquatch back out in Wellington Lake. This is a continuation to this. When I came back into Denver and I was talking to Mike that at his store, he said, you know, you should go and do a nighttime investigation. And I said, yeah, I'd like to do that. When are we going to (laughs) go? And he said, well, I'm not going to take you out. So what you should do is contact Jim Myers because he does these nighttime investigations up there. I was like, okay. So I ended up calling Jim, making arrangements. And I do believe this happened in the same month in September. And it was like September 18th into the 19th. And I can't remember if that was a Friday or a Saturday night. I ended up thinking, okay, I need to get some type of night camera. And so I started looking around on the internet and I found myself a Bushnell Equinox Z. It's a six by 650. And it can see roughly a thousand yards in distance or 10 football fields. And you can zoom in you can focus in, you can get beautiful video and photographs. You cannot record audio. So I was like, all right, you know, that's fine. I, I can deal with that. So I ordered this thing and it shows up before this adventure with Jim. And I tested out with Riley and I have Riley come out onto this open area in between townhomes and I'm filming him. I noticed that when Riley looks at me, his eyes are blinking a lot and I'm like, okay. So the eye light might cause a little bit of blinking from whatever I'm looking at. I can see detail on Riley, really good detail. I can tell he's a little Pomeranian. So I take him back inside. I'm happy with what I got. I kind of film my neighbors to see what they look like and everybody's eyes glow, you know, just like, Riley's eyes, they they were glowing. I was like, that's cool. So I ended up going up there and hanging out, thinking that when I get there, it's just going to be me and Jim and a handful of other investigators. Well, I drive all the way up to Bailey and I pull in and there's a lot of cars parked out front of the store. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. But, you know, maybe it's not a whole lot of people. But once I start walking into the store, it's jam packed and it's about, eight or nine o'clock at night, there's a lot of people in that store. And people are going, Jim, when are we going? When are we going? And he was looking around and goes, okay, Patrick, you're here. And I said, yeah. And he goes, all right, we're going to be going here shortly. Anybody want to buy supplies? Because we're going to have a snack or a little meal or something up there on the top of the mountain. And I was like, no, I think I'm good. And so I had my stuff all ready to go. Jim looked at me and said, you're riding with me and a couple of my investigators. And there was like, I want to say 10 to 12 other people that came along, but they were in two other vehicles. And so we drove out and the location is roughly uh, between um, Wellington Lake and the store. We pull into the first parking area and it's got a ton of cars. And I'm like, is this normal? And he said, no. I said, something's off. And I was like, okay. So we kind of looked around for a parking spot. We didn't see one. We drove to the other parking area that's closer to the trailhead. And again, there's all these cars. And I was like, so these people are not investigating Sasquatch. He goes, no, 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 no. This is something else. Something else is going on. So I was like, all right. So we grab our stuff and we get out. And we start getting ready. And they said, okay, we're just going to hike up the trail. And as we're walking through the parking area, I'm seeing car after car with doors open and people's legs sticking out. And I was like, is that normal? And I said, should we just grab these people and drag them back in their car and shut the door? And he goes, no, 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 just leave it. So the first image in my head was with Don Knotts. And one of his old movies with a bear, honey, and feet. It's called The Apple Dumpling Gang. If you have never seen the movie, go watch it because it's hilarious. I'm thinking about this, and I still think we should drag these people in, you know, shut the door. But they're all snoring. So he said, just leave them. Let's go. So we start hiking up the trail. And we're going for a distance. And we stop, and we're talking about things. And I noticed that there is these five 
pole pines to my right. And they're all leaning into one tree. And I said, is this a teepee? Jim at first said, no. I said, are you sure? And he said, yes. And so then we both looked at it. I was pointing out how all the, all the trees were leaning into one spot on this tree. And I said, that looks like a teepee to me. And he goes, you know, that actually might be a teepee. So we kind of were looking at the way that the structure was. But the pitch where I was about to step down on, if you took your arm and you, and you extended it out about a foot from your, your body, and you imagine that you're standing on, say, your shoulder, that pitch going down is the same pitch going down off this trailhead. And he said, whatever you do, don't step too far off because if you do, you're going down. And that's about 100 feet down to that stream. And then you're going to have to walk all the way around and come back. I was like, oh, that'd be terrible. So I went out onto this thing and carefully maneuvered between each of the trees. And I was able to lift up the pole just enough to tell that it wasn't attached. And I said, this one's not attached. And we walked, and I walked all the way around this thing, trying out these poles. And I said, how many? I said, only one's attached, and that's the center tree. The rest of them, it looks like they were brought in. And he was all excited about that. So he, he marked it down on something and he said, okay, I know where it's at. You know, I'll come back and look at it in the daytime. So we started hiking up further and we kept going. And we got to a certain point where it leveled off. I'm looking back into the trees now. It's pretty pitch black outside. We all have headlamps on. It's a nice night. It's not too terribly freezing. In the distance, I can see a light source and it's it's slowly moving through the trees. And I said, I said, Jim, is that a light source? And, and he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're thinking it might be something substantial here. What's about to come around the corner is a guy dressed in camo. And I was like, what's going on? And he said, well, there's a bunch of hunters. We're back here hunting deer. And I was like, okay. And Jim apparently knew the guy. And they were kind of talking back and forth. I said, so why are you going back to your car? And he goes, well, I have to get a flashlight. He said, I shot a deer, but I can't seem to find it. I found a trail, I found a blood trail, and it leads to nowhere. There's just nothing there. So I have to go back and get, you know, a flashlight. He was on his way back out. Jim and I were kind of talking about it. And I said, do you suppose the Sasquatch took his deer? And he goes, that is a strong possibility. So we ended up going up further. And he said, whatever you do, do not walk left into the trees because that's where all the hunters are. You'll get shot. And we're like, okay. So we just kind of all wandered on this big troop of people. We started climbing higher and higher and higher. We get to a point where Jim veers off the trail and we kind of, there's an area to the right that now you can start walking on and we're walking back and I can see how the ground slopes off at different spots and goes, just don't step off. You don't want to go down the hill. We're walking across and I see that we're crossing Bob wire. And I'm like, is this private property? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, I'm not a fan of crossing on a private property. And he's like, don't worry about it. I know the people. We're not going to get shot. And in Colorado, you can't get shot for stepping on someone's private property out in the rural parts of Colorado. So we were, we were wandering around for about 20 minutes and Jim stops and goes, wait, we're in the wrong spot. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is not what I want. So we ended up going back around and I said, I'm going to prop this fence up because we don't need to be crossing this. And he said, no, that's fine. So myself and another investigator, we propped up the fence to keep people from stepping onto this property. And we wandered back out onto the trail. We walked for another about 20, 30 minutes and we veer off again. And he said, this is where we're supposed to be going. And I said, okay. So we're roaming around in the dark and we get to this high point. From this high point, we can see over into the valley behind it. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. I've never been up there during the summertime to see what it's like in daylight hours. But at night, it was beautiful. Even though it's dark outside, you can still see the mountains against the sky. There's enough ambient light to see that. You can still kind of make out the forests that are surrounding those mountains. And I was like, this is really slick. And I said, this is where you guys go? And he said, yeah, we come up for all the time. And I started to think about that scream that I heard in Wellington. I was pretty sure this is where that individual came when it came over the top of the mountains. And I quit hearing that sound. I was like, well, this has got to be it. This has got to be that spot, especially if they've had experiences out there too. So the entire group sits kind of near the trailhead. And I walk back into the woods about 15 feet. And I sit down and I'm just kind of sitting there listening to everybody talk. And Jim's saying, okay, hey, shh, 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 quiet, quiet, quiet. And it's just really silent. So Jim pulls out his uh, wood stick and he starts pounding on a tree. <laughs> and that sound echoes, you know, in the areas. And I was like, oh, that's cool. We're all sitting there quiet, listening. 
and there is no response. There is no knocks back. That doesn't mean that there's no Sasquatch there. It just means that they're not knocking back for whatever reason. And it could be because of the hunters. So we're just sitting up there quietly. And so he does a yell. Rawr! And again, it echoes. And I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of neat, too. He's doing his things, but he doesn't want us doing any of that stuff. So we're kind of sitting back and just letting him run the show. And I sat there for probably about 20 or 30 minutes just listening to nothing. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to turn on my camera. And so I turn it on, powered it up. Now, this camera does not have audio whatsoever. So when I started to turn on the film, I was talking to myself the whole time. When I ended up watching the footage, I was like, why is there no sound? Well, there's a reason why. But you cannot also do playback. So there's no playback on it. You can only film forward. So I turn it on and I start to pan the area. So I put this camera up to my eye and I'm going slowly across the darkness. I'm seeing trees, all kinds of pole pines all over the place. And you can see the different areas on how the ground goes up and down, kind of like a roller coaster ride. It's all over like that. And I thought, you know, this would be fun on a sled until you hit a tree. And I'm looking at everywhere, all the way around me, it's just nothing but pole pines, uh, some sporadic bushes. But the pole pines in height range from anywhere from 20 to 80 feet in the air. And I was like, wow, these are some seriously big trees. And even around me, they they were still towering over me. And I sat down next to a tree. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll just sit here and relax. And I finally turned on the record side and I start to film again now at sitting down level versus standing up and looking around. I'm now sitting down and I start to pan slowly across. The first thing I come across looks like a chimpanzee's face. I was like, that's interesting. That That's really pretty cool. But the thing is, I don't see glowing eyes. I don't see that. And like Riley, I should see glowing eyes. That should be happening. And I don't see it. So I was like, okay, that's bizarre. But if you draw from your forehead around your eyes, over to the top of your cheekbones, and then down around your mouth, just like on a chimpanzee's face, it's identical. It's totally identical. You can see how the lips are. You can see the, the slit for the mouth. You can see the wiry hair on the face, you know, on the outskirts, or, or not on the actual skin, or the exposed skin, but around the, the head and stuff. You can see all that. And so I started to zoom out just a little bit. Now I see the entire body. And I can see the arms, the body, the legs, the feet, the hands. I see all of it. And I'm like, how is it that I don't see your glowing eyes? I should be seeing that. And so I'd take my head away, close my right eye, because now my if I open my right eye, I'm going to be seeing purples and blues and greens and oranges because the intensity of this camera on my right eye. And I'm looking, there's no eye shine. I don't see any of that. I'm like, okay. So I put it back up to my eye, open my eye back up again. And I start to look at this. And I said, Jim, can you do a wood knock? He goes, sure. He pulls out his stick again and goes up to a tree. Crack! And I'm watching for a flinch and there's nothing. And I was like, okay, why is it he's not flinching? Maybe, maybe he can't hear it. So I said, Jim, can you come over by me and do a wood knock? He goes, sure. So he walks over by me and he knows I'm filming down into this area. And he says, do you see something? And I said, possibly, but I'm not exactly sure. And he's like, okay, I just want to see if this thing flinches. And he goes, okay. So he does two knocks, bang, bang, and nothing. There is no flinching, no nothing. He said, do you see anything? I said, no, it's not moving. And so I'm going to write this off as it's misidentification. It's not what I think it is. So he goes back over to the group and he's talking to them. And he said, no, he thinks he sees stuff, but he's just kind of writing it off. So I start to pan to my left and I see a thicker pine tree sitting there. And I think it's a red cedar. The tree's kind of a little bit thicker in the, in the tree trunk. It goes up probably about five feet and it, it has two leaders that extends off of it. And technically a leader is just a branch that extends off from the body of the tree and it goes up. And there are people in Colorado and some other areas that seem to think that a trident, which is a tree that has the center leader, but only goes up about a certain height. And then it's got two other branches that come off is created by a Sasquatch. That's not exactly true, but they think that this is the way it is. Technically, it's a tree that gets hit by like a lightning strike and it stuns its growth. And that part of the tree is technically dead where it sticks up. It's non-existent anymore, but two leaders will extend out. Sometimes there's a third that kind of extends out from the back and goes up and all three leaders become the main part of the tree. In the middle of this U shape that I'm looking at is this weird looking 
but it looks like the back of a primate. Like it's just sat down and I can see the, all the wiry looking hair. Now it could be that I'm looking at pine needles, but it looks like a body of a really big primate that's just sitting. Like all you can see is the back. You can't see the head, the neck. You can't see the arms because it's just sitting perfectly in that tree. And I'm like, all right, that doesn't seem right either. So I said, Jim, can you do a wood knock? And he goes, you see something else? Yeah. Could you do it? And he goes, yeah. So he does a wood knock. There is no movement. I'm like, what is going on? I pan to the right. I pan to the left. I look back at it. I was like, no, it's nothing. And so I pan back to look at the chimp. I can't find it. And I'm like, I did not move too far. I just moved to the left, moved back to the right, and the chimp is gone. I can't find him. I zoom out. I don't see him. I don't see him anywhere. I'm like, how is it that he's gone? I go up a little higher. I move up. And I'm doing like almost like a grid pattern, trying to figure out where this guy went. I was like, he's got to be there. He's got to be there. So I veer to my left. I turn all the way around. I'm looking toward my far left. I don't see it. I'm panning back. And I'm looking, you know, to see if there's something else there. Well, as I pan back, I see him. Like, all of a sudden, he's there, but his position has changed. And I was like, that is wrong. He wasn't in that position before. (laughs) Whatever this is has changed its position and its sitting position. It's giving me this cold stare and I'm just, but I'm not seeing the glow. I'm not seeing any glows in the eyes. There's none of that. I'm getting a little frustrated looking at it and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. So I take the camera and I decide I need to stretch out my back. So I take the camera and I pull it up to my head and I'm filming the tree that I'm under and I'm leaning to my far right and I'm looking at Jim and everybody. And then I go, okay, so I switch arms and I move the camera back up to the tree again. I'm leaning to the far left kind of stretch out my back because it's hurting. Jim's like, you know, oh, we're, we're going to take a break, you know, because he's not hearing anything. He's kind of stumped by it. He was expecting we would have all kinds of evidence going on. So I'm sitting there. Okay. So I turn off the camera, put it to the side. I'm eating some like snack bars and stuff and I'm drinking some soda or water or something. And after about 20 minutes, he said, okay, we're going to do a couple more knocks. And then I think we're going to head back down. And I was like, oh, well, okay, this is short lived. So I turned back on my camera and I pan back over to this guy, right? This chimp. And I find him fairly quickly. But this time I see what appears to be a hand. And that hand is slowly moving towards the face. And I was like, what? If this is real and I'm filming him, then I'm catching his hand that is slowly trying maybe to block the IR light from hitting him in the face. But I still don't understand why I don't see eye reflection. Eye light that hits eyeballs on people or animals is strictly eye reflection. It's not eye shine. So I'm sitting there looking at this guy, trying to still figure it out. But the hand has now, when I looked away and I looked back, the hand is now almost in front of his nose. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. You can see the length of his fingers. He doesn't have fat fingers like the gorilla. He had really long, skinny fingers. Like if you look at your hand and double up on the length of your fingers, that's what his are like. It was like double the length of all the fingers, including the thumb. Cliff Brockman talked about the, he thought that a Sasquatch juvenile or even of the adults, they can take their thumb and wrap it around the fingers of the fist. And it should be able to go down the body of like crossing all those fingers and looking at that, I was thinking, yeah, that's exactly what that is. That's what it almost what it resembles them, that they're extremely long. And I have photographs of handprints on my car where one of the things, for whatever reason, I thought that's a thumb. The thumb was like almost three lengths in, in length versus my thumb. It'd be three of my thumbs in length. And I was like, that's crazy. Seeing that now, it tells me a whole lot more about this. But looking at it then... I was like, those are some seriously long fingers on this guy. When he said, okay, we're done. And I panned back and I was looking at him. His hand was covering his face three quarters of the way. And I was like, that's, that's cool. I turned off my camera. I did not announce this to Jim. I got up and I walked down to the, the trail where everybody else was. And he said, you ready to go? And I said, yep. And I made sure I picked everything up. And we started hiking down the mountain. And as we're going down. Jim is still kind of knocking just to see if we can get a response. And there's just nothing. We get down to a clearing and it looks almost like a Jeep trail. And I don't remember seeing the Jeep trail when we were hiking up, but I wasn't really paying attention to the, where we were walking. I was looking around to the right, to the left and what's ahead of us. 
So Jim said, we're going to stop here for a minute and we can look out into the valley in front of us. Again, the pole pines are up about further off in the distance. We're at about the same height as we're, where the treetops are sitting. Jim said, Patrick, turn on your camera and just pan left, right, go all the way around, just see, look in the trees and see if you see something. I said, okay. And he was under the belief that he thought they would climb trees. I believe the same thing. And, but now I know that they do because I've got footage of it. I started to film. I turned on the camera, started to film slowly going from straight on to my left. And I just did a complete circle, spun all the way around, caught people. And I was aiming out front and off in the distance, I spot these two dots and these two dots are going up and down this tree. And I was like, well, what's that? So I zoom in on it. I don't know how far it really was from us, but I see the tree and I see these two brilliant white eyeballs looking back at me. And whatever this is, is climbing up this tree. It's going up, 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 climbs all the way up to the top. It looks out at me. And I was like, what? And I see blink, blink, blink blink and then it goes back down ding, 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 and I was kind of following it, going down it stops and I see that there's something in front of it, kind of blocking it and then that thing goes up the tree goes all the way up to the top turns looks right at me and I see blink 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 and I'm like oh those are two different individuals in that tree and I was like what is that and I thought it could be a pair of bear cubs and then I thought it could be a pair of raccoons and squirrels the eyes were too far apart. I didn't see a squirrel being part of this. But I kept watching these things going up and down this tree. And they got to a point where they would only go down about five feet. And then they'd go back up to the top of that tree and they would look out. Well, one of them, the one that was furthest back really facing me, it takes a hard look to its right. And I was like, what are you looking at? And so I pan the camera slowly to the left, to my left. It's uh, right side, my stage left. I pan it over and I'm looking right at it. And I'm like, oh, my God. And what I'm looking at are two seriously large eyes. Either those are eyes or those are some seriously large planets that I'm seeing in the background until I see blink, 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 blink. And I was like, nope, those are eyeballs. I was looking at it. So I panned out just a little bit or zoomed out just a little bit. And I can see there's a tree to his right and a tree to his left. There is no tree right behind him. And I was like, what is he doing? Is he straddling? The way it looked is that he probably had a, his right hand and right foot on one tree, left hand, left foot on another tree, and he was like stretched out. When I was a kid, we had pine trees in our backyard, and I would climb up one of them, and I would grab hold, and I would lean, causing that tree to bend just a little bit. I knew that that tree should be bending. If he's leaning, there would be one tree that's leaning, and it's not doing it. They're both holding true. I was like, there's no way that those trees would be bending right, left, whatever. I was like, well, it's got to be what that is. Jim turns and looks at me, and I'm looking at this going, oh, that's cool. And he said, what are you looking at? And I said, I think I'm looking at our reflection. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah. And he's like, you might be seeing eye shine. And I said, no, I think it's our reflection. And he goes, let me see. So he comes over to me and he's getting excited. Now my hand is through the lanyard and it's holding onto the camera, right? So I got this thing up to my face. I said, hold on, let me just get it set. And he goes, no, no, no. And he grabs my camera and he yanks to my right. And my left arm is now roughly hitting him. And he's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm attached to the camera. He goes, well, let go. I said, I can't. I got my hand is in the lanyard. Let me have my camera back. So he kind of gives him it back to me. I said, put your arm through it or put your hand through it because I don't want you dropping this. He goes, I don't need to use a lanyard. And I said, if you drop this, you're paying me top dollar. And he's like, okay, I'll use the lanyard. So he puts it in, cinches it up, and he starts to go through the buttons. I said, don't touch the buttons. He goes, why not? I said, because some of them zoom in, zoom out. He goes, perfect. And I said, but the rest of them will turn off the camera. What? Boop, off it went. And I was like, oh, Jim, what are you doing? He's like, well, it just turned off. I said, you punched the wrong button. So give it back to me. So I had to go back through it. I got it. I, he said, why can't you just let me turn it on? I said, because there's settings I have to put back into it. I was on generation three. It could set you all the way back to the color mode, which is just a basic everyday daytime viewing of stuff. And he's like, oh, so <laughs> I got it all turned back on, got it all set. I was looking straight through. I said, okay, I can see him. So just put it back on. So he put his hand back to the lanyard. He's looking through it. And he right away pitches to his right, and he films this tree to his right. And I was like, what are you looking at? Well, I'm looking at the tree you were looking at. I said, Jim, I was looking straight ahead. I wasn't looking at this tree. 
So he pulls his head away from the camera, not knowing what's in the tree there. He brings it back down. He brings it back up. He puts it back up to his eye. And I'm pointing to where it's at. Now I've got my right hand over my right eye because I'm seeing blues and purples and greens and yellows. And so <laughs> I'm trying not to see those colors. So I got my hand covering it, waiting for my eye to readjust to the darkness. In the meantime, he's looking out. And I said, now, do you see those two dots? He goes, yes. I said, those are the, if you look to the little bit left, a little bit right of it, you will see two trees. And he's like, oh, but we can't see if it's actually holding on. We're not exactly sure yet. So he's looking at that. Other people are kind of taking notice. They were all kind of sitting back and watching. Now, there was one person there that had a flare attachment for their cell phone. The cell phone flare is okay, but you have to be kind of close to use it. And he was trying to see off in, in the distance. He goes, I can't even see that tree. And I said, that's because it's too far off. And I said, cell phones don't have that kind of viewing capacity. This is back in 2015. Cell phones have changed. You know, now they're a lot better, but back then they weren't so good. But he was trying to zoom in on it and he couldn't do it. So he quit. He ended up turning off the flare, putting it in his pocket and put his phone away. We're still looking at it. Now I've noticed that I can see the two dots up in that tree. And it's kind of off. And I was like, I can see those dots without the night vision camera. He goes, are you serious? I went, yeah. And then I started looking to the right of that. And I could see the little animals going up and down it. But again, I can't see what they are. From that distance, I couldn't see. But I could see the dots going up and kind of blinking at us. And I said, they're blinking, right? And he goes, yeah. And I said, yeah, I can see them. They're going up and down that little tree. And I said, but to the left of that, I can see those two dots. And he's like, oh. So he takes the camera off his eye. And he goes, oh, my gosh. And he's looking around. I said, do you see all the colors? He goes, yeah. And I said, take your right hand and put it over your eye and let your eye adjust. He said, okay, just kind of like keep the other eye shut. He was doing that and it takes like 45 seconds for your eyes to clear up. So once he took it off, we were talking about it. I turned off the camera, put it back in its case while we were looking at these things. And we all saw the, the white lights go red. And we thought, well, that's odd. And then they went from red to yellow. And he said, you know, I'm starting to think that maybe those are car lights. And I said, they can't be car lights. And he said, why? And I said, because we're up high and we're looking across the tree line where are there cars that are driving around at the tops of the trees? He goes, well, we're just, it's an optical illusion. We're looking like, say, at Bailey. And he said, Bailey's to our left. We can't see Bailey from where we're at. And he's like, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I'm positive. And he goes, well, then we're looking at a car somewhere in the trees. And I was like, I'm not catching that. That doesn't make any sense. But he kept saying that it might be car lights. And so I started to think it too, that maybe these are car lights. So he just said, we're just going to debunk that right now. Those are car lights. I said, okay. So we started walking down the mountain again. But I kept thinking, at that height, that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't add up. So as we're walking down, I'm looking at where we were, and I'm kind of drawing a line with my eyes to see which tree it is that we were looking at. So I turned back on the camera again, and I turned it to photograph mode. So it's just going to take pictures. I figured out this was the tree that this was in. And I looked up in the tree, didn't see anything. So everybody else was walking on and I was taking pictures. I was taking random photographs down this corridor. And I thought I saw something that looked like two individuals down that corridor to my right. Now, those could still be the hunters. But I was filming that direction. I thought, well, okay, that's intriguing. But I don't know what that is. And once you move to the next picture, you can't review those pictures again until you get home. So I turned off the camera. We walked further down and I lifted it back up was taking random photographs all the way down until we got down to the cars. Once we got to the cars, he said, okay, we're going to all go back to the store, which we did. He offered up coffee to the people who wanted to drink coffee and a hot chocolate. Like I took that and he said, drink however much you need. And then, you know, I'm going to close up the stores. I'm going to go home. It's, it's a long night. Let's just go. I said, all right. So I get into my car, pack everything up and I head back to Denver. When I get home, I put the camera away and I just kind of disregard it. I don't want to look at anything. I'm too tired to do it. I go in, I say hi to Riley. I take him out for a quick little bathroom break outside, go back inside, and I eventually just go to sleep. In the morning, I'm telling Darla all about it, and she's all excited. But I don't go back and review the footage right away. It takes me about three weeks to go back through, to find it, to go through it. And I start reviewing the videos. And I realized I'm not really watching all the videos. I'm, I'm watching partial parts of the video. Then I just go click to the next. And I thought, you know, I really need to watch it from beginning to end. 
And so I see the one with the chimpanzee looking thing. I was like, that's kind of crazy looking. I stop the video and I click on that image and I save it to the computer as a photograph. I zoom in on the face. It looks like a chimpanzee. Everything says chimpanzee. So I'm like, okay, a couple of the images, it kind of looked odd, but I was like, you know, okay. I kept those images. I still have the videos. I started to review when I was sitting under the tree. So I'm watching the film and I see that I'm turning as I'm panning up that tree. There are a pair of eyeballs looking down at me and I didn't realize it. I was like, oh, are you kidding me? And I'm looking straight up. So the camera's aiming straight up. I was apparently leaning over to one side. I wasn't paying attention while I was filming. Both times that my arm was in the air filming up in that tree, kind of catching the sky, I caught, looks like a head sticking out of the tree with a pair of eyeballs looking down at me, blinking, looking down straight at me. Again, I didn't know it was there. So I went and I reviewed all the rest of the videos. I didn't see anything when uh, on top of that mountain. We started going down and the place where we stopped, where Jim took the camera from me and filmed to his right and aimed the camera up into the tree, we had another set of eyeballs looking down at Jim. And I was like, oh my God. I laughed so hard going, I didn't even see that guy. I was like, that's crazy. And so there was something in that tree and it could have been a bear. It could have been cubs, but none of us heard anything. It was just total silence. A bear would probably have made noise. We probably would have heard it scurrying around in the tree, but nothing was making a noise. Everything was quiet. So I was like, that's just weird. So he pans back down. You can see the scuffle that we had. Where I was filming, you could see the things going up and down the tree. You could see the blinking of the eyes of that other larger target. So I was like, you know what? I got to clean up that shot. So I took a still shot of that. I'd separate it from the video. So I moved the video off to the side and I opened that up and I began to clean up that image just to see if I could change out the lighting effects a little bit here and there. And I was able to do that. And I could actually see against the backdrop of the sky, the silhouette of a head. You could see the shoulders extending out to the two trees. You could see the arms. And I was like, oh, my God. I was ecstatic. I was like, this is great. You can roughly see where his hands are. You can see about his midsection. And then everything after that, it's hard to read. But he is extending his body between two trees. And he is watching us the whole time. And then you have the two guys or the two things that were just to the right of him going up and down the trees. And I was like, this is great footage. (laughs) <laughs> this is amazing. So I took my cell phone out and I took, again, the photographs of the screen, what I had caught, drove down, said, Mike, look at this. And so I started showing him pictures. And he said, well, those lights, they could be from a car. I said, it can't be. Let me show you why. And I zoomed in on it, opened it up, and he was able to see the silhouette of the head against the two eyeballs. And he's like, oh, now that's compelling. I said, but he's holding onto a tree here and a tree here. There is no tree underneath him. He said, are you serious? I said, yeah. He's actually stretched out. And he was like, that's pretty cool. I said, but look at this. This looks like a chimpanzee's head. And I didn't show him the whole body, but I showed him the head. He was like, you know, that could be a mountain lion. And I was like, again, if this was a cat or anything else, I would have seen eye reflection. That would have been showing up. It shows up on Riley. It shows up on you and I. When I'm filming other people, I can see it in our eyes. I can see it in Riley's eyes. Why isn't it showing up in this? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm confused by this. So he said, you know, we're going to go out next year because it, we're not going to do anything the rest of the year. I said, okay. But next year, keep in contact with me because I want to take you out. I want you to go with me to some of these different spots. I was like, cool. I was excited. So this part of this story ends here. And it has to end here because the next thing I'm going to talk about happens at a spot that Mike kind of discovers. And I'm there for it. And I actually become part of Sir at this next event. And then that event happened, I think it was like June, July, somewhere in there. I'll have to go back and look at the photographs. But that event introduced me to Junior. And Junior is a juvenile Sasquatch. And he actually, I think it's a he, he actually shows me how strong he is. And it's a unique reality check for people in a tent. Because this kid literally lifted me off the ground and he shook me around like a rag doll. So I'm going to leave it at this right now. And so the next story I talk about will be when I'm with Mike and the entire Sur members at this other location. 
that's the end of my story for now. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run down new horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the plow. And the five string melodies groove in. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep, beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the south are soothing. When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music Yeah The sound of a memory brings me back To the bluegrass playing on my dad's a track His pick-up man had been through it Getting through the day on scrugs and skags Booking their bales to those Tennessee jams There's no other way that I'd do it and I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah Summit on the backwards, backwards and double time Looking at the soul and the drummer of Kentucky style Those are the anthems drumming out country boy living And I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out Rushing by with the bass on the stereos booming. And I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music. Yeah. Something going backwards, backwards and double time. Looking at the soul and the tremor of Kentucky style. Those are the anthems drumming out. Country boy living. Sweet tea, kind of sound.